We are packing up the van. Race morning here, about to head over to get on some e-bikes. I pulled motorbike duty. I've never in my life ridden a motorbike and I've certainly never filmed a bike race from one. So this should be interesting. They're a little bit sensitive about you working on the bike yourself. But I have these special pedal washers I need to get perfect alignment. I think this is going to be the secret thing. Let's hope they didn't tighten these too much. Fun. I haven't turned on the motor yet, but uh, it rides nice. I forgot to mention that your bike doesn't have a motor in it. <laughs> it's only 12 kilos without the motor. Oh, That's look at it. This. Vegan energy bar, see? Flow bikes, big fan of vegans. <laughs> on. All right. Uh -huh. So you have three mode. Yeah. Huh? You have three mode. So when it's white, it's off. Okay. All right. It's not. You're not using any push. Then if you press this green uh -huh. is echo. Okay. Just a little bit of boost, not much. Uh, sport. The blue and uh, red turbo of course but i more, can, like, uh, can wear out the battery yeah we will uh change battery if we need oh, after really? 60 kilometers okay so, so just running on turbo that's the whole right Not the race we were expecting, but a uh, fun ride. Nonetheless, I think once we got rid of the idea that we were gonna be doing a brutal ride into the Apennines on a motorized bike and realized we were just gonna be doing a leisurely spin, uh, it was fun. It was better than being in a car. How much did you use the power? I used about 70, no, I used about 30%. It actually gives you like a little readout. I think Andrea used at least 50%. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you ran out of battery. I gave him my battery. So. Um, full disclosure, Sheehan, how much battery did you use? Do I use batteries? <laughs> oh, I didn't know that it was did you? Did you ever turn on your e-bike? You can turn that thing on? <laughs> Is that why it was so heavy? Jesus! I thought I was really... I just didn't think I was fit. You're definitely fit. Michael's training for Tulsa Town, so... He hasn't had a drop of alcohol this whole trip. Stopped drinking coffee. You hear him grunting upstairs, and you're like, what is that? He's like, I'm doing planks. <laughs> yeah, he's training, he's training. A, lot, a lot of fun having a bike racer at uh, Grand Tour, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I think Mulan's following me. <laughs> I, I'm a little bit worried, actually. So we're on the Giro E-Ride, and a VIP group of riders on e-bikes caught us including Michael's nemesis, 
Alessandro Bolan. You remember you, Michael. <laughs> I have on his list. I remembered you. <laughs> oh my god. I, that's gonna come back to bite me. I, I don't know where, I don't know when, but uh, yeah, Bolan has it out for me. <laughs> that was definitely the highlight of the day. Uh, Bolan catching you turning around and saying, why are you going so slow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good on him. He's, he's a really cool dude. That was pretty funny. That was pretty darn funny. <laughs> So I think watching the race on the phone uh, during a bike race, <laughs> not even in Italy, this is considered legal. So, All right, that's a wrap from stage seven. At the, I don't know what date it is anymore. I just know what stage it is, sort of, stage seven. Uh, just finished up. Get ready to shoot the show, but Giro E, quick recap. That was a pretty cool experience. Uh, jumped on a motorbike for the first time. We started a little bit behind the group, so that first descent was pretty horrifying. Going down at however fast we were going, I was just holding on for dear life. I don't know if the footage can do it justice. I'll put some on right here. But that was, uh, I was holding, there was nothing. I was not, I was just holding on and hoping I, we were not gonna go down on, on one of those corners. But that, once we got through that first ascent and caught up with the Peloton, uh, incredible view, it was a pretty cool experience at Giro E, giving people who aren't accustomed to riding bikes a chance uh, to ride the Giro course. So Giro E was very cool to be a part of that. There was some incredible scenery on the climbs, which, We'll show you with, with some of this footage. It was not as much a race as we initially thought going into it, but it ended up being a fun ride. It was, it's always good to see the, the course at the Giro ahead of the pro riders going through. And uh, there's a lot of good uh, camaraderie amongst the different teams there. Some people who were giving some pushes to some of the riders up the climbs and helping each other out. So overall, it it was a lot of fun. It got some, handed some beans from some spectators on the side of the course who were eating a meal. Some of the other GROE riders stopped at their table and had some food. So it was a pretty relaxed atmosphere, but pretty fun. And then the hospitality that was 100 meters to the finish line was incredible and, and very cool to be able to watch the, the finish in that kind of atmosphere as well. So Giro E, thank you for, for having us out for the day. It was very cool to get an inside look at that experience. And the first time ever that they're having this e-bike stage race essentially that goes ahead of the Giro and rides the last. 100k or so every day so i definitely recommend checking that out you can see our full video on fullbikes.com that highlights the goe experience and that'll be up as well so you can get a deeper look at what went into that and um everything that happened today at the goe travis did you know why there's so much construction in lacula why everything yeah. is being rebuilt there's an earthquake here. How long ago? Ten years. <laughs> Correct. Boom! <laughs> What's up, <laughs> Italy history? <laughs> ten years. Yeah, it was ten years ago. So the stage today, uh, finish in Lakala, was to remember the really tragic earthquake that hit this city. Like, over 300 people died. The city was quite destroyed, and there's still rebuilding it um like all these structures have been rebuilt are being rebuilt shout out to my pinrel mechanic for hooking me up with that stat today <laughs> i think it's uh andrea pretty i mean honestly really tragic event for italy the earthquake here yeah it was the entire old city center actually uh, get destroyed and you can still see wow. some of the damage around so they put a lot of money effort to rebuild so the historical town center is now almost done 
Oh, that of course, a lot of the old houses. Not. So, but we will get there. I mean, it's cool that uh, the race came back here and you could tell that it was important to the to the town for the race to be here. Yeah, I think they also had a sort of agreement that the city itself didn't have to pay for that. Uh -huh. You know, usually the city that hosts the stage pay, I mean, a huge amount of money for that. But there was a, a big deal uh, where the city didn't have to pay, so they got some exposure and some, you know, income without actually any expense. It's going to be good. Nice little <laughs> shortcut to get to our hotel. Italian cycling guide, Andre Nicosia. <laughs> One more ride. <laughs> no, I'm, a, no, no. I'm a cycling guide, not a walking guide. <laughs> One more ride, also known as one more kilometer. <laughs> we are at the fountain of the Cento Velle, which was the fountain of the hundred heads. Uh, back going back to Roman time and then restored in medieval time. Almost collapsed during the earthquake in 2009. And thanks to the citizens of the city and some contribution from uh, uh, the old country, the fountain got completely restored and you know the outside wall rebuilt using the same stones uh, from the original walls so yeah and it's now back we are eating the famous arrosticini di pecora typical from Abruzzo but even more specifically from uh, L'Aquila and the mountains range uh, of the Apennines around the Gran Sasso so the arrosticini it's sheep meat, like this, roasted on a sort of barbecue. Uh, you can have different kind of, you have the spicy one, you can have the fillet, you can have the liver. Uh, and you eat them like, uh, they're only about 10 each. Like, you know, that's the way we eat them. Something really special. How do we know? What? <laughs> How do we know that this is a good restaurant that that, that you chose tonight? Thanks for the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you can do that, but next to us there is a table of uh, the Rai TV stuff, and these guys they spend the whole day while the Giro is on looking for the best restaurant around the finish line. So if you end up in the same place with them, it means you will be all right, all set. So one, day, one day that'll be full of bikes. <laughs> we'll be like, oh, 50 people doing nothing except looking for the best restaurant all day. <laughs> Look forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good at that. Make the deconstructed salad. <laughs> That's a wrap from another day at the Giro. Next tomorrow, we're headed out in the morning for the long transfer to go scout the stage nine time trial. So stay tuned for that video, full preview and recon coming from there. But for now, tonight in Lacala, we enjoyed the view of the Apennine Mountains here in Italy.